Welcome back to Restless. I'm Father Joseph Gill, priest of the Diocese of Bridgeport, and we're coming to you fresh out of Stamford, Connecticut. It's almost like Compton, but better. <laughs> I'm, here, I'm here with Diane, Carmelina, and Paul, and they're all shaking their heads. And happy Easter to you all, at least happy Easter season. We're uh, a couple weeks into this awesome season, but thankfully we get to celebrate it for 50 days, which is pretty rocking. So how was your Easter? What did you guys do this Easter? Easter's been great. Yeah. Um, I hosted a hol- a major holiday for the first time at my house. Parents and siblings? Yeah. And Carmelino was there and my one of my roommates. Um, and he stuck around until after lasagna was served. And then he went to his parents' house, which is kind of funny. Um, you must have had the better lasagna. <laughs> well, you know, I do. Um, <laughs> life-changing lasagna. Um, it's true. So it was great. Um, we just had a, a really joyous time. Um, you know, it's been a tough year, so. We actually, our family was not together for any holidays, any major holidays in 2020. So, wow, we were together other times, but not for any major holidays. That kind of hurts, though. Yeah, it's like, yeah, yeah. It's not not ideal, but you know, we made it work. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's awesome. What did you guys do? Um, so my boyfriend came down for the Easter vigil. So, um, well, actually, on Holy Saturday, we went to um, confession, then just hung out a little bit before the vigil. Um, went to the vigil at St. John's in Stanford, which was beautiful. The choir was phenomenal yeah um and then after that we kind of broke our fast and <laughs> went to a pizza place down the road um nice. and then to just yeah then just to a friend's apartment in stanford for a little just a small kind of you know i guess resurrection party um and nice. uh, how late was that um probably stayed until like midnight or twelve thirty. so okay. not too late yeah just a couple hours but um I'll have to be young again <laughs> And then I don't know. I, I think we left early. It was uh, I was had to yeah. You guys long. left a little early. Right? Yeah, I was tired. Mm-hmm. Um, but then the next day was actually my birthday. So um, oh, happy birthday! Thanks. Yeah. Um. So woke up in the morning, went for a run. You know, like made smoothies, watched some movies, and then my brothers. Uh, oh, Wait. We went so for a walk. Easter Sunday was your birthday. Yes. Great day to be born. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. So it was. It was a great day. Um. My brothers came over, so they live kind of close by with their wives and um, one of their kids. And uh, so we had dinner together. And then um, my boyfriend's uh, friend and his girlfriend, who we had just gone to see in D.C., were actually driving down um, through Connecticut. So they stopped by and we went to get gelato. Um, there was one place that was open, so that was really great. And uh, Where do you get gelato in Stanford? In Greenwich. Oh, Greenwich. Okay, of yeah. course. Mm, I should have known. Mm. <laughs> it was very good. Um, <laughs> and the next day we went up to um, to his parents' house and just kind of had a lunch with his uh, parents and siblings. So that was really great. And then, yeah, the whole week just, you know, celebrating going to Mass and um, ending with Divine Mercy Sunday um, up in Massachusetts where he lives. Um, it was really beautiful. Did you get to the Divine Mercy Shrine? We did not. No, oh. that's on the other side of the state. He's on. Oh, is it okay? Yeah, so okay. it would have been like a two-hour or so drive. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Cool. I was with Paul and his family, and his roommate. It was so fun. <laughs> the lasagna was very good. It must have been life changing. It was very good. well. He had to make me a gluten free one, so I had my own pan to myself. Nice. That his other roommate. And my other roommate de- demolished when we got home <laughs> oh, that night. I yeah. had no- none left, so <laughs> it was fine. It was for everyone. We love you, Bobby. but it was it was great very laid back very casual um so good to be with um a like kind of pseudo family they're just you know phenomenal people and it it was just so joyful to finally be together for such like the most important holiday of of the year right so it was great the weather was beautiful oh it was beautiful. beautiful day yeah um yeah, it was fantastic. And then I flew out to see my parents the following day. Oh, good. So you did get some family time. I did. That's it was, nice. It was nice. That's nice. I flew to California the next day, too, and was with my family out in California. So, Oh, very cool. Yeah, that was fun. Very cool. That was nice. Yeah, yeah. I was able to take uh, a couple of days after Easter. People think that the Triduum is busy for priests. It's really not that busy. Because other than the liturgies, nothing else goes on. Like the office is closed, no, no appointments, no meetings. So you just focus on those three liturgies. And then once they're over, it's actually really pretty chill, which is great. It's great. Yeah. So and then after Easter, it was nice this Easter was being able to see a church that's packed compared to last Easter, which of course was empty. empty. And oh, man. That was yeah, phenomenal, was Father. Oh, my goodness. I mean, the mass was so beautiful. I to, to, 
to really reflect on where we were a year ago and to where we were now to basically having a normal mass, what seemed like. And it was it was so joyful and celebratory and yeah, yeah. amazing, like beyond words, incredible. That's yeah. a good reminder in the midst of a pandemic that life triumphs over death. Absolutely. Ab- like when all we of the that. lights went on in the church, like he is risen. It was just like, yes, <laughs> <laughs> let's party. Amen. <laughs> Great. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Yeah, it definitely felt celebratory this year. Absolutely. It was yeah. celebratory because last year we were we were like deepening into this pandemic thing. So like Easter tide, the 50 days of Easter tide was like in the world was very unpleasant. Still felt like uh, Lent. Yeah. Yeah. A little bit. In a very real way. Mm-hmm. Mm. Absolutely. And you don't take it for granted either, you know, like just the whole trium. It was so beautiful, especially mm-hmm. at St. John's. I mean, from Holy Thursday through the Easter vigil. And um, it was just, you know, especially after the pandemic pandemic of not being allowed to come to mass and then to see all these people, like you guys said, it's a, it's a pretty, pretty amazing feeling. That's great. Mm-hmm. That's it was great. so amazing to like live the triduum with friends and community like it was like the same people who we saw at Mm. you know spy wednesday holy thursday good friday holy saturday easter sunday it was like you could everyone kind of knew each other there and to just there was something like at least for me like unspoken about being there in that community to celebrate our lord's life together throughout the whole holy week in triduum just beyond words like this year just (laughs) Ah. <laughs> so good. That is the joy. Yeah, to celebrate with community. Yeah, definitely. So do you have any, like, you know, especially when you were growing up, do you have any Easter traditions? Ha! Easter traditions. I made Paul so, an Easter basket. Did you really? That's a tradition in yeah, my we would family. Have Easter yeah. Then. Yeah, we would have Easter nice. baskets. Nice. Always have to have Easter I got metal. She gave me metal, um, like, cup, quarter of a cup. I don't know what they're called. Measuring cups. That's I got what he metal. Asked I had for. plastic ones. I, I wanted metal ones. So That's I, a step up. It is, yeah, because I always break them. Any case, my family. So my I uh, I mentioned previously or that my father's a tax attorney, but and but my mom was also a tax accountant. That's how they met. They met at a CPA firm. Oh, um, hey, and uh, romantic. Yeah, <laughs> they met at a copy machine. Xerox, a Xerox. Anyway, More and romantic. so there's got to be some joke in there somewhere, but I <laughs> it, can't it, find it. <laughs> the the uh, 80s Xerox machine. It was like Kleenex. Anyway. <laughs> um, we have to pay for those probably. Anyway, um, so 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 depending on when Easter fell, if it was pre or post April 15th mm. was the determination of how big of a celebration we would have because Easter generally would fall before April 15th. Right. It's pretty rare for it to be after. We wouldn't do anything. That's kind of sad. Or, or very little. <laughs> we do very little. Sometimes we'd go to my, my like cousin's house and my mom would not join us because she'd be working, unfortunately. Oh, man. Rough. Yeah. Rough. Yeah. yeah. Especially if Easter was like April 12th. Mm. Really bad yeah. timing, but in case. Well, you said your your birthday was Easter this year. My birthday is April 13th. And I don't know about you, but your, your birthday is probably almost always in Lent. Yeah, it is. Um, my 21st birthday was also Easter, but... Oh, was it? Not? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yes. Right. And I think 2040-something, my birthday will be Good Friday. So I'm not looking forward to that. Oh, that's yeah, that's kind it's of a good downer. Friday, yeah. No, no cake. Yeah, no cake, no nothing. Yeah, yes. next year, next year, my birthday's in Lent. It's it's in Holy Week. It's the Wednesday of Holy Week. Oh, so Easter's oh, okay. late next year. Yeah. yeah. When, when is Easter next year? The April sixteenth. Okay. Uh, like that. Yeah, thirteenth is the Wednesday. I don't know what. You know, oh, never mind. Yeah, it's farther out. Whatever. But, but yeah, it's always kind of a down a downer to have your <laughs> your birthday in Lent, especially in Good Friday. <laughs> but yeah. So, any other Easter traditions? Um, I normally not this year, just because of some COVID issues and and stuff um normally go to my uncle's house with my family but this year you know it was my birthday and just uh different things i guess when i was younger yeah we would just go to mass on sunday i mean i think the easter bunny came on up to a certain age and then my mom was like easter is not about the bunny so there was none of that um (laughs) and uh yeah I don't know. We we make that lamb cake very good. That's good. My yeah. mom did not make it this year though. She was like, "It's too much effort, and uh, <laughs> there's too much opportunity for error." Do you guys eat peeps? No, no. I can't stand what uh, I love peeps. Oh, Wait, so Father much. Joseph. No, I can't. No, do that. no. it's too much. Mm-mm. Too sugar. My some of my family members like them, but I, <laughs> eh. no, they're so cute. But 
they're just fun to look at. Oh, we would, me and my brother would definitely pull the heads off and talk about each other. I mean, that's definitely happened, but that's, that's just normal boy stuff. <laughs> Peeps are precious. I didn't get any this year. I was kind of disappointed. Aww. Well, maybe we'll buy you some in the after after Easter sales. Yeah, it's probably a good sale right <laughs> now. Yeah, I'm sure they're like very we'll much discounts. We'll get you stale because no discount. I like the stale ones better than the fresh. Yeah, the hard. The Do they even the get still? I mean, oh yeah, oh, yeah, oh, they oh, get yeah. rock hard. They get rock, oh, and that's yeah, the best. Yeah. Ooh, so good. Oh man, yeah. so good. Yeah. <laughs> all right, so our listeners out there, <laughs> any leftover peeps, all peeps, send them to 279 Atlantic <laughs> yeah. Street, Stanford, Connecticut. Send them Father Joseph's way. St. John's Church. Just in case you're wondering. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, speaking, so we talked about kind of the secular uh, observance of, of how we celebrate with family and friends, but, you know, St. Augustine had a great quote and he said, we are an Easter people and Alleluia is our song. You know, wow. Like what a great thought, you know, that Christians like year round, we should celebrate that in our hearts, you know, that Christ is risen. So like, what does that, I mean, what does that mean? How do we live as Easter people? I, I think one of the things that I was, when I was contemplating that question is that even during Lent, our time of preparation and, and solemnness. And we still have Sundays, right? Our Sundays and the two solemnities that usually fall within that um, of St. Joseph and the uh, Annunciation, those are still celebratory days. And so even though, you know, Catholics were like doom and gloom, Lent, you know, we put ashes on our forehead, like, what's wrong with you people? It's like, no, we actually celebrate during our most contemplative season. And and that just goes to the the resurrection yeah. and, and the mystery of the Eucharist, right? So... Although in some Carthusian monasteries, um, they actually do a, have a big ceremony for the burial of the Alleluia. Hmm. They take the Alleluia, they put it in a box and go outside and dig up dig a grave and stick that box in the grave. Wow. So it's kind of an interesting thought of like the Alleluia is yeah. gone, so it's somber. But you're right. Yeah. There's always kind of an eye to that. Absolutely. I think, so when I used to work at, at this, at the Christian camp, um, they challenged us to try and find God in all things. And one thing that I think reminds us that we are Easter people is celebrating the gift of life. And we see that every day through just like the sunrise, especially in the springtime too, where, you know, the flowers are blooming, things are alive again. And we can find, we can live this in a very simple way by just recognizing the gift of life all around us, whether it's in the people that we encounter or again, the sunrise and, just things that we we see all the time. Yeah. I'm so moved by some of the the prayers that we pray and particularly the one the one that's always moved me is the second reading on Easter Sunday morning comes from one of St Paul's letters. I forget which one, but his line is if we have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, not the things that are on earth. Mm. Kind of the re- the reality that the resurrection of Christ is a historical event, but like our our lifting up of our hearts and souls and his his living in us should be a daily event that the resurrection can't just be something that we celebrate, but then don't live. Mm-hmm. I don't know. What do you think? Yeah. Kevin? And just the, just the fact that we are sons and daughters of a King and that, you know, like we, um, we have this new life that he has given us and um, to, you know, like just to kind of rejoice in that of, that no matter what happens to you in this earthly journey, that um, there's this hope, you know, for um, for heaven, for our salvation, for, you know, like our future resurrection. And um, I think that in and of itself, you know, just, just pondering and reflecting on that is um, something that is, is all the reason that we need to rejoice. Mm, yeah. But, you know, the resurrection is... I mean, obviously, there's been nothing like it in human history for a human being to rise from the dead themselves. You know, I mean, Jesus raised a few people from the dead. Even the Old Testament, Elijah and Elisha raised people from the dead, but no one's ever raised themselves from the dead. And that's a pretty remarkable feat when you think about it. Put yourself in the apostles' place. Like, what in the world is going through their mind on Easter Sunday morning? I'd assume there's probably a lot of different emotions, right? You have probably, I don't know, well, they're still probably afraid, first of all. Like, if you think about it, they're, they're still afraid. They're hidden somewhere, right? They're hiding. And, um, and so that, that's, that's, that's part of it. But then it's probably surprise, shock, you know, um, it's probably maybe to some extent, maybe a little bit of, um, like peace in the sense that it's like, okay, it, it, it worked. Like, (laughs) I mean, this, this whole thing isn't for naught, you know, like, um, 
And and so I think those are probably a lot of the emotions. And and probably I would hope there was joy in that. Yeah. Yeah. And I also, I don't know, this Lent I was kind of thinking about, um, you know, like what sort of, I mean, the first thing that Jesus, you know, he just, he came to give peace, right? And so he, like, I wonder if these apostles were, they knew that they had sort of let him down and denied him and, you know, like what was, was sort of going through their heads of like, wow, really messed up, you know? <laughs> and then, but to have Jesus kind of, you know, like the first thing he says is like, shalom. Um, and that is, uh, it's just, it was probably the sort of like that, um, I guess, just to understand like the mercy that he showed them in, in sort of that like first encounter. I think that is um, something that probably transformed them as well. Uh, just, mm. yeah. So. That's a great point. Cause I think the natural human reaction is, would be for Jesus to be like, what's wrong with you people? Yeah. He had every reason to come in there and just be like, you all, you all left me like, yeah. <laughs> except for John, <laughs> you know? So um, yeah, just to kind of, uh, to experience that, that love and forgiveness and mercy right there. I think that in and of itself, besides the fact that like, you know, he's alive, um, I'm sure that that set them on fire to, you know, to, to kind of do what, what the Lord was calling them to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, I just can't even imagine the depth of sadness and despair and fear and shock that they would be experiencing for the time between the time that Christ was crucified and the resurrection. And it almost would have been like, I, I would imagine like kind of trying to put myself in their shoes that they would have experienced a sort of a death themselves spiritually in those three days that Christ was not with them. And in a way they could have almost risen with him spiritually in seeing mm. him again, which, yeah. So kind of like putting, putting myself in their shoes. Like I could imagine that they, they would have felt dead, not only losing their friend, but but God, to walk with God and then to see him die. Just I can't imagine the level of, of trauma and shock. That Emotional roller coaster. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, and then fear. It's like, what's going to happen to us? But he said he was going to rise. And when is that going to happen? Maybe it's the third day. And, you know, so many things happening at one time. Yeah. One of the one of the great fruitful meditations I've often meditated on, especially when praying the rosaries, is that some of the church fathers said that Jesus' first apparition was actually to his blessed mother. Mm. And what a great meeting that would be. Because Mary, I mean, obviously all, all the way to the cross, knew that something was going to happen. That was some way God was going to redeem this. Whether she knew it was going to actually be a resurrection or something else, but she, she had that faith, right? And so to finally see her son again, you know, what, a, what an incredible and tender meeting that must be. I don't know, I've always been kind of moved by that thought. And also it's, it's the glorified Lord too, mm -hmm. which is is still Jesus, but he's he doesn't exist in like time and space. So like we can't we don't even know what if he appeared to Blessed Mother, like we don't know what he looked like too, you know, and that that's gotta be shocking for her in a good way, you know. Yeah. And it's I don't know, just think about that. Because she had always believed that he was the son of God, but now with her own eyes she's seeing it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's wild. Yeah. The yeah. fulfillment of everything that had that had been spoken. Yeah. Yeah. Just her, her life fiat is just incredible. Paul and I had watched the and I know you, I know you did too, Diane, watched the Passion on Good Friday. And there was one moment where I think as soon as Christ was he was about to be scourged, and in the movie our lady said something along the lines of, um, may your will be done. And it was just this incredible amount of suffering, yet the abandonment that she had given over herself and her will again to God, and then to rise in a way with him on the resurrection is just incredible. Well, one of the church fathers said that Mary died spiritually when Jesus died physically. Mm. Like that she felt the pain so intensely. And and actually, Mel Gibson's movie, I think, brings that out because there's a line where Mary says, let me take this death instead of you, mm. you know? Whew, wow. So, I mean, do you think just in the church, like, do people focus more on like Jesus' death or Jesus' resurrection? Because the simple, you know, it's funny because I have, you know, I have some very good Protestant friends and, 
And they don't understand why we as Catholics have crucifixes. Oh, yeah, that's for sure. Because they have just a plain cross. And they, they've always, I've always asked why. And they said, because Jesus rose. Like, we don't need to focus on crucifixion anymore. What do you guys think? Well, well we have, we, it, it's not, this is not a mutually exclusive decision. <laughs> we can focus <laughs> on both. <laughs> and both are vital because you can't, he couldn't rise unless he died. And, and dying on the cross is like it's a victory in and of itself for us Mm. and and that's it's good friday i mean and 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 we should be reminded of that um and he bore that he bore that cross for our sins um and and that's 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 why we that's why we have crucifixes and it also shows us the way that we are supposed to live we are called to suffer and to pour our own selves out so that we may become more like like Christ. I mean, that's sanctification. I was listening to um, another Catholic podcast today about how we can't pick and choose our suffering and how it was talking about the the debate of, you know, euthanasia and stuff. And it talked about, you know, the importance of suffering and how when, when the host of the podcast would ask older people, people towards the end of their life about you know, do you wish you would have done anything differently? What were the most formative parts of your life? And they talked about suffering well and how critical those moments of suffering are. And absolutely, we cannot have the resurrection without death. Mm. That's so true. Yeah. And when I look at the crucifix, I see the love behind it all. Mm -hmm. You know, when you see the cross, I mean, certainly you have to kind of mentally imagine jesus on the cross but when you see the corpus there particularly if you go to like a mexican church Mm. our hispanic brothers and sisters love bloody crucifix (laughs) the bloodier the better and that's a visceral visceral image and and, even a lot of a lot of we showed the uh, passion of the christ to our youth group and i did get some pushback from parents i get it every year and they're like the kids shouldn't be watching this it's too bloody i'm like well you mean you keep your kid home certainly but for me i don't see the blood so much as the love behind it all and it's also a reminder, too, that, you know, it was our sins that put him there. You know, we need a savior. We, we're not okay. And uh, that's kind of, you know, I think the sort of message that secular society is like, you know, we're all okay. We're, we're good. You know, you're hmm. good. I'm good. But we're not. And we needed him to do that. Um, so I think it's, it's necessary to, you know, keep both uh, aspects of sort of the Paschal Mystery um, in mind. Yeah, yeah. So speaking about those, you know, kind of very practical aspects of the past, past, uh, Paschal mystery, what are like the practical consequences of the resurrection? Because, okay, we know what the cross did. The cross, you know, saved us and forgave us. But, but like, how does the resurrection actually impact you and me in our daily life? Well, I think, well, we, we get to share. Well, I think it's the hope in, the, in sharing of in the resurrection, ourselves and that's a that's a hope because um at the end of time we will also be reunited with our bodies and 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 share in that not experience it as christ did but be able to share in that um and and be with him for eternity so i think that's the hope and that's that that should be what should be not necessarily what does but that should be what what drives us every day mm. right and i think that you know god and his mercy I think, as I said a little bit earlier, kind of invites us into living the resurrection. You know, every, I think Father Mike Smith said, every time we prepare ourselves to go to sleep, we prepare ourselves for death, essentially. And then the next morning we rise. So it's it's almost like our, our entire lives, you know, night falls and then the dawn comes. Our entire lives are every day reflective of you know, the death and resurrection kind of in a in a smaller way. And to be consciously aware of that, I think, can help us all in our own spiritual journeys, you know, to be aware of how present God really is around us. Um, and even like when you go to confession, that's another resurrection. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, you suffered the death of sin and now you get all that new life back yep. in your soul. Right. It's true. You know, when... when when people, you know, obviously mourn or grieve the death of a loved one, knowing that the resurrection is coming is a great hope. Because if Christ, who has all of our frail humanity and all of our problems except for sin, you know, all the suffering, 
And he could redeem that and come back in, as Paul said, in such a glorified form, you know, in a form that where there's going to be no more, more, te- more tears. That's going to be, that's something we all look forward to, that we all need that hope. Absolutely. You know, that's, and that's kind of goes to what St. Paul was saying earlier was that, you know, if, if we have died with Christ, we have, we will rise with Christ. It's another, you know, great theme that comes out of the, the liturgy of uh, uh, Easter. You know, what does that mean? Like if we've died with Christ and we rise with Christ, I mean, it's, it's kind of vague, I think. But practically, what does that mean? You guys have to help me with my Easter homily next I, year. So <laughs> I know. That's no, why I'm asking all these questions. Actually, it makes me think of, of your homily from yesterday on Divine Mercy on um, Divine Mercy Sunday and how you talked about our Lord's mercy and how no sin is too great for him. And just how, you know, no matter how discouraged we may get, there's always that door open for redemption and, um, you know, to turn away from our own sinfulness and temptations to come back to our Lord. And so, yeah, I think in those ways, like you were saying, Father, especially through confession, we are invited to the opportunity to, you know, die to ourselves and rise again with Christ. One of the things that, I don't know, I, you know, I was reading a, a book, I was on retreat this past week, which was wonderful. And one of the books I was reading kind of talked a lot about how, you know, creation is good, creation is good. And, and like, you know, God kind of shows himself through creation and all that is very, very true. But in, in my own spiritual life, I find sometimes creation can be a snare in that, you know, you focus too much on the creation and not enough on the creator, mm. you know, and it can, it can, we can, we can make creation an end in itself and the resurrection, I think, and, and kind of dying to yourself is like dying to this world and saying this world as good as it is, is not my home. Right. And I also think that we can, each one of us, you know, in any state of life can also just live this out, you know, however God is calling us to live, like, as a mother, for instance, you're just continuously giving yourself to your children and your husband and your family, you know, out of love. And, you know, as a single person, maybe you're volunteering and giving of your time and going to mass, daily mass even. And, you know, that's kind of a death to self. And we can even do this in small ways, like maybe instead of looking at our phone or scrolling through social media, we could pray the rosary, something like that. Those are all little sacrifices that, that we can make. For, for our Lord. Yeah. Choose the hard thing and we'll have real life. Mm-hmm. Real life. Thank you so much for joining us on this episode of Restless. You can find us on Veritas Catholic Radio, which is 1350 AM. Also, wherever you get your podcasts. Also, please follow us on social media. Tune in next time. <laughs>